either your higher chemistry students and today is the first time that we're going to learn some new knowledge. Section D is entitled Esters, Fats and Oils, but we're going to split the lesson into two parts. First part, we're going to concentrate on esters and then your next lesson next week will concentrate on fats and oils. So esters. Esters are another homologous series. They are formed when we react an alcohol and a carboxylic acid together via a condensation reaction. All esters contain an ester link, which is a C double bond O, O group found within the structure. And we see the ester link on the diagram. So in order to make an ester, like I said, you have to react an alcohol and a carboxylic acid. The forward reaction to make an ester is a condensation reaction, but this can be reversed, known as hydrolysis. Condensation is when we take two or more small molecules and we join them together by the removal of water or another small molecule. Hydrolysis is the natural reverse of this. Rather than joining together, we break apart a larger molecule into smaller molecules by adding back in water or a smaller molecule. Specifically to form an ester, we react the small molecule of a carboxylic acid with an alcohol, forming our ester and eliminating water as well. Because we specifically form an ester, it's also known as esterification. So we have a few examples. Example number one is the reaction of ethanoic acid with methanol to produce the ester methyl ethanoate and water. In order for the condensation reaction to occur, we always take OH from the carboxylic acid, hence from the diagram, we see OH being removed from the ethanoic acid and we take H from the hydroxyl group of the alcohol. It's not any random H from the alcohol, it's the H specifically from the OH group, as we can see in the diagram. So when you remove OH from the acid and H from the alcohol, we join together what's left from the acid and the alcohol and we make our ester. And on the diagram, we see the ester link. Example number two is the reaction of propanoic acid with ethanol, producing the ester ethyl propanoate. Again, OH from the acid, H from the alcohol. We can see this in the diagram. We join together what's left of the acid and alcohol with a new bond. We call this the ester bond and we see the ester link. It may also be useful to draw the alcohol and acid with the functional groups both facing the plus sign. It will make it much easier for you to see where water can be made and therefore eliminated. Be careful, you will not always start with the acid or alcohol. So be careful. How do we name esters? We take the first part from the alcohol and change its ending to aisle just like in a branch. We take the second part from the type of acid used. So for instance, propanol becomes propyl, butanoic acid becomes butanoate. So when we join it together, the ester is propyl butanoate. And similarly, pentanol reacting with methanoic acid becomes pentyl methanoate. Again, be careful, you will not always necessarily start with the alcohol. So if we had, for instance, ethanoic acid and methanol, your ester would be methyl ethanoate. First part from the alcohol, second part from the acid, always. And now it's your turn. Can you please copy and complete the table as you see fit? You're also expected not just to name esters, but to draw them, whether that be to draw the full structural formula or the shortened structural formula. When drawing the full structural formula, 
it might be an idea to draw the full mechanism. So for propyl butanoate, we can see both versions of it. It's just a mirror image. But it might be an idea to draw propanol, butanoic acid, remove the water as shown in previous slides to get your final ester. Also, you would be expected to draw the shortened structural formula. So, for instance, the shortened structural formula of propyl butanoate using the first diagram shown there would be CH3, CH2, CH2, COO, CH2, CH2, CH3. Remember to draw the shortened structural formula. It might be an idea to draw the full structural formula and then take each carbon one at a time and state how many hydrogens are attached. So for butyl methanoate, we have this, depending on whether you started with drawing the alcohol or acid first. When we make esters in a lab, it's a two-stage reaction. Remember, we need a carboxylic acid and an alcohol to condense together with the removal of water to form our ester. If we want to make the ester pentyl ethanoate, we would have to use pentanol and ethanoic acid, along with a catalyst, concentrated sulfuric acid. It's really important that the acid is concentrated. We need the H plus ions present. So step one of that reaction, you would take your alcohol, take your acid, and take your conch sulfuric acid and react them together in a test tube. Pop the test tube in a hot water bath. This is really important. It's never a naked flame. Wrap a cold paper towel around the mouth of the test tube to help condense the products and to stop any gases escaping, we plug it with some cotton wool. Allow this reaction to happen for about 10 minutes before carrying it. Step two. Step two is where we want to observe and collect the ester. Esters are non-polar, therefore they do not dissolve in water. So when you have left your experiment for the 10 minutes, you would take a small beaker. In that small beaker, have a small quantity, 20 ml, 25 ml, 50 ml, a small quantity of a base sodium hydrogen carbonate solution. You would then pour the contents of your test tube into the beaker of base. Why do we use a base? Because the base will help to neutralize any excess acid. Remember to make your, your ester, we used an alcohol, acid, and conch sulfuric acid as the catalyst. There's an excess of acid there, so we want to neutralize any acid to be left behind with our ester and water. You will know if you formed an ester with three observations. You will see the bubbling and fizzing as you pour the contents of the test tube into the beaker containing the base, an indication of a neutralization reaction occurring. And once the fizzing out stops, you will see a thin oily layer on top of the water and you will smell a sweet, fruity smell. The oily layer is your ester, again, immiscible in water, therefore floating on the surface of the water. And all esters have a fruity, sweet smell. Just a little bit further explanation as to why the fizzing occurs and why we form the oily layer of the ester. We know that forming of esters is a reversible reaction. We can also break down the esters, hydrolyze the ester by heating under reflux and then distilling. That will get you back to your original alcohol and acid. We're also going to learn that if you use an alkaline catalyst to hydrolyze your ester, you can form a substance known as a soap, but we will cover this later in later parts of unit two. Why do we use esters? Esters are fundamentally used for three things. Flavourings for foods, for instance, 
pear flavour, strawberry flavour, mango flavour, banana flavour. I'm sure we all love, as children, Haribo straws. I know I do, foam bananas. But no, they're not made from little fairies injecting your sweets with flavour. They are made from esters. Fragrances such as perfumes and aftershaves are also made from esters. That's where we get the lovely sweet fruity smells. And because esters are immiscible or insoluble in water, they can be used as alternative solvents to water. So things like nail varnish remover. Because esters are non-polar, they do not dissolve in water. But to form the ester, you have a very polar alcohol and a very polar acid. Because of this, we have different physical properties of esters.